go and try. Don't fight so hard about picking the right one because you can always change. And like, it's your education, it's your life. And you can't really let, you don't want to let anybody else dictate what you decide to do for yourself. I'm not going to let anyone else's thoughts influence me to get yourself off the ground and like to be able yeah. to, to jump and to maneuver lift your body. And, yeah. 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 And that depends what kind of dancing, but mm -hmm. I'm sure you're going to get a straight white guy, but you're also going to get, you know, a non-binary person who wants to use he, they pronouns on. Hello, you beautiful people. Welcome back to the long-term podcast. Today we have University of Alberta math major at St. Jean and musical theater dancer Jack Bazook. We will discuss picking a major that is right for you, being male in a female dominated sport, and gender and identity. Everybody, welcome. Sweet, man. Yeah, hilarious. Oh, yeah, <laughs> welcome. Welcome to the long term podcast. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah, bro. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I'm a 23-year-old kid who went to high school with you. And then uh, I was in French immersion all the way up. And then, you know, it took some time off after COVID. Um, and then decided to go to school. Decided that wasn't it for me after I got concussed and then decided, you know what, let me go to school here again, come back home. And yeah, I'm just like, I'm back home now. I'm feeling really good. And uh, I'm like yeah. excited to be you here. in the United States for a bit. Yeah, I was in the States. I was all the way over in Pennsylvania. Um, wow. Which is like, it was quite far away. Were I was about three hours south of Toronto. All alone? Um, yeah, just by myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, you know, school is school. You're going to find friends. You're going to find okay. people. Like I had... Yeah. You know, relationships there that were nice and everything, but it just was so far away from family. And I feel like family is such an important thing to me that like, you know, not being able to be like, hey, mom, can I have help with this? Or, you know, all that stuff. It just was rough. And like I had my uncle lived in Hamilton, Ontario, or still does. Um, and so he was close enough. He was about three hours away. But still, three hours is a long time, and he, you know, he's worked. You so he doesn't have even time. Three to, hours, you, you don't have time to visit on the weekends. No, and like time. I didn't, yeah. even, I didn't have a car. Like I couldn't, yeah. I wasn't driving. Like I was stuck. I was luckily everything was in walking distance that I needed, but still, like it wasn't ideal. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a really cool experience, and I would totally say, like, if you have the opportunity to go to school far away, give it a shot, give it a try. Like, don't don't um stop yourself from experiencing new things just because you're a little worried about them yeah right? like try a little bit and then see if you truly like it and you know in your case you got concussed yeah and i got then concussed had to <laughs> and then and then it was just a case of i was sort of fighting with being there and i was struggling yeah. to go back to class after getting injured and it was a ca like a case of like why am i kind of wasting my money Mm -hmm. not going to class, living in this faraway place, paying all this like, you know, 10 grand a semester where I can come home and live at home, work because I wasn't allowed to work because I was a, a student um, on a student visa. And so I was yeah, making no income and not feeling great and just kind of getting bogged down. And so I thought, you know what, let's get out of here. It's probably the best option for me at this moment. And then, yeah, came on home. Big like reset, hey? And I think you learn, right? you learn so many skills being in another country with different people and not having family around. I think for, I haven't experienced it myself. I've gone and I've traveled by myself and I just know that I, was, I get homesick really easily. I love my family. I love being near my family because they're my foundation. Like I go to them when there's a lot of mental afflictions and there's a lot of problems. And yeah, I don't, being concussed too, I need to be able to, have someone to talk to like my mother and my father or my siblings just they are my you know my foundation so i, I, I need feel that. that so hard like <laughs> i just said to my mom the other day man i haven't seen my aunt in like a week this feels weird yeah and the week because we were going to like a family party that night and like it was the we just we did the august birthdays so you know everybody went over to granny's house we ate dinner but like it had been like three weeks since i'd seen everybody and it was like this is weird it's been three weeks because yeah. usually it's like, you know, I see him all the time. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and know you, uh, you just traveled somewhere recently? Yeah, actually, I was just in Egypt of all places. Egypt. Yeah. Tell me about that. Um, 
so the reason I went is because uh, my sister is working there right now. Um, she works as a dancer. And so she gets these like six month long contracts and hops on a plane and flies to a crazy new country and lives there for six months and works. That's and amazing. Then, she must be a very talented dancer. Yeah, well, hard she, worker. she works super hard and it's, it's, I'm really proud of her and proud of where she's gotten to. Um, yeah. Certainly it's anything in the entertainment industry. If you're able to make that a living is no easy feat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, yeah, being able for her to like find that mm -hmm. niche of these contracts and the things that she gets to do, it's just awesome. And yeah, so we, we went to go visit her and I mean, we, we kind of decided very abruptly, like we were gone the last week of July. I think we decided we were going on July 1st. So Okay, to get to Egypt, you have to have a visa. You can't just go like visit like London or like the States where you can just mm. go and go in. doesn't matter. You have to have a visa to go to the country. So you have to send your passport to the embassy in Ottawa. And then they have to look at it, look at the document you sent with it, fill it all out, make sure it's all good, stamp your approval, give you a visa, send your passport back. If you do it, you know, if you know you're going to Egypt in six months, will you do it way in advance? comes back in a couple of weeks, you're golden. We had to do it kind of expedited. So my mom flew to Ottawa. Dude, that must have been high stress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, we, she flew to Ottawa. She got all our just visas. Just for that. Just for the yeah. visas. Yeah. Then she came home. But what happened was, is my sister's um, passport was expiring within six months and that they won't let you get a visa if your ex passports are expiring within six months so then we had to get her a new passport oh, send the passport we no. got them all back we got the visas we're good we went we went it was okay. great we got there it was one of the most interesting places i've ever been and like i i've traveled i i have now officially been to five of the seven continents as I of know, that yeah trip. i see all the pictures it's, and it's, it's crazy beautiful beautiful um, place and what i think the funniest part was not a single traffic light really and like, the, you know, the dashed line on the road and the, the solid line on the road, it's a, it's a guideline, not a strict rule. Like if you were mm. like, I can't imagine Sherd Park had been sitting without traffic without lights, man. traffic lights and or people just being able to go like willy nilly within the roads. Wow. Like that's what it was. It was crazy. Although no, I didn't see a single accident. Wow. Can you imagine a day like you go a whole week without seeing an accident? No, that's I like see rare the, here see them all the time yeah. and we have traffic lights we, and we have like the laws mm. and the rules and all these things maybe we need to abolish the traffic light <laughs> system maybe right. it's not the it's not know, optimal man. for our safety it was the it was the funniest thing dude that's amazing and then the weather there how was that oh so hot we <laughs> left the, the the week that it was plus 40 here oh like so it was like 30 35 here right <laughs> i remember saying Thank goodness. Thank God. <laughs> I we're to my going to Egypt. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm beating the Alberta summer heat, which when is you, have you ever said that? Never. Yeah. Like, then you come to Egypt and it's. And then I go to Egypt <laughs> and it, it never got lower than 36 at night. Oh. There were days where it was 45 Celsius. Damn. Like it was so hot. <laughs> when yeah. you opened the door from the hotel room into the hallway, it was like, you know, when you open the oven. After something's been baking, you get and that you waft get that, of heat the, in your face. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was every time you open the door, you'd step out of the hotel room and just be like, boom, you're in the hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's amazing. Well, uh, yeah, welcome back. Now the first uh, first Sam of school. Yeah. First at uh, St. John. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. First try back in yeah. the French. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So picking a major for you that is I'm still I feel I'm, I'm very perplexed as to you are an arts guy and you dance your math major and actually you're pursuing you want to get into eng as well yeah that's so, that's the goal is to <clears throat> finish with an eng degree i want to get that pinky ring oh yeah man <laughs> is it only engineering students are they I the only it's, ones that it's um nursing students too i don't think so it's canadian engineers and it's because it's supposed to be um metal from a bridge that collapsed and so the idea is that <clears throat> I will never build something that fails. You have a responsibility. Because you have the ring. Sure, you got an 80% on that class. <laughs> yeah, the C's get you degrees, but you yeah, know. Yeah, you can't get any more C's on building bridges. Uh -huh. you know, it has to all be A pluses every uh, yeah, single time. Exactly. Yeah, that's, I think that's the, that's, um, <laughs> yeah. and it's like a big ceremony. Like, yeah, my dad's an engineer, my cousin's an engineer. When my cousin got her degree, 
he actually went and gave her her ring because mm. you you have to like you can you can you know if i got mine my dad could be the person to give it to me um because it's like within the engineering thing it's really neat i like that that's, um, that's pretty dope yeah so what factors influenced your decision to major in math and how did you know it was the right choice for you and like it's you could replace that with eng yeah as you, so that's, i think for me like when i was in high school the thought of picking a major was terrifying right the thought of the future was terrifying everything was scary i didn't know what i was doing and so i really struggled like trying to figure out like what i was going to do afterwards right because i was in dance and dance was ending and high school was ending and it was like everything was coming to a close and i didn't have a place to go next right so i had a bit of a rough time and i ended up i was in i was in bio 20 first semester grade 12 Maybe two months in i went I can't be in this class anymore. What if I want to get into engineering? I have to have math uh, 31, right? I have to have calc. So I switched my entire schedule around. I dropped out of bio. I hopped into the math class that was 30, 31, and then proceeded to flunk out of 31 because I was so stressed out and I tried to teach myself calculus, which is not easy. So it didn't work. In (laughs) retrospect, though, really easy now that i've done now that i've done calculus in college it's or in like university yeah. it's very yeah. easy. realize how privileged we were in high school mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, if only we could go back i always talk about <laughs> university students right like, wow how high school was so easy but then again that's everything that's so you true. never know you have to kind of you have to learn the hard way for everything you got to be can, in something to yeah to realize what you had before was good <laughs> yeah because a lot of a lot of kids like will be told oh high school is a, a is a privilege you got so much time and us being in high school we feel that there is no time mm-hmm. there's it's so much pressure for classes the 30s like physics 20 was daunting mm-hmm. Phys- physics 30 was like whoa and mm-hmm. then calculus like, was just yeah so numbers come easy for you so yeah honestly yeah. they always yeah. have something about just the way that like my brain works is that i find numbers come really easy when things have a very definite answer um i find that that is something that i can get behind and that i enjoy like and i like when things are very you know particular yeah. um you don't have to debate the equation yeah, there's no, feelings <laughs> exactly there's no there's yeah. no like is it the right answer well half of it's yeah. right like there's none of that like it's jimmy just, is sad okay does that really mean jimmy is sad i mean he was, exactly yeah. or like, like or the the worst one which is you know what did the the color of the drapes mean you're like they're just red they yeah. just mean that it's because they picked, the designer picked red i don't know what yeah. to tell you like, yeah it's not that deep <laughs> exactly there's an equation that explains why it's red maybe but exactly yeah yeah, if, yeah. you can't <laughs> debate that <laughs> Were were there any challenges or doubts you faced while choosing your major and how did you overcome them? So, I mean, I certainly doubted if it was the right one. Um, and I honestly, I doubted going to school at all because I had had such a rough time at the end of high school because I was so worried. And so going back to school was a bit rough. And I actually started when I went back to school in uh, Pennsylvania, I picked general science major. I was like, you know what? I'll just go into science and then I'll see where it comes of it and I'll just get a degree. Doesn't matter what it is. I was, (laughs) they put me in a bio class. I didn't take bio in high school, but they were like, you know what? You'll be fine. You'll get a tutor. You'll be fine. And I said, okay, sure. I went to that class three times and then I decided, you know what? This is not the major for me. I need to change. So I went to the engineering department and I said, can I transfer? And they said, yep. I said, great. Awesome. So then I transferred to engineering and then did my two years of engineering before getting concussed. What and about then, bio didn't you like? Honestly, it was just, it's so much information and so much like memorization specifically, like where there's not really a rhyme or reason for it. It's just like, here's what it is. Learn it. Whereas like, you know, it's like, what are all the parts of the cell? You just have to know what they are rather than like th- there's nothing kind of making mm. you learn them um yeah with equations there's like what's the terminal uh what's the velocity right there's the, there's a reason then, it's like okay the calculation well, if, exactly it's like and if then, i you know there's there's a a very like 
I can see that there's like a practical application for this that I can that I can get to. Um and like I'm also just not a weirdly enough, I'm not a people person. I don't really want to work around people really? or with being, people. Being in dance? Yeah, yeah, you'd think you'd think that as a theater kid or like, you know, a very outspoken and boisterous person that I would love humans, but you're introverted. Surprisingly, yeah. I'm like mm. an introverted extrovert because yeah. I will gladly put myself out there but it's a performance and like once that timer once the like the social battery runs out i just yeah, shut right down out. i don't want i want to be out of there and i want to be done um so and i also don't do well i'm very empathetic so i don't do well in situations where someone is hurting someone else is hurting on their own terms i actually choose not to watch a lot of tv because i don't always want to feel the emotions that characters on tv do um because usually they're very um, strong and it's not easy to like deal with strong emotion all the time on a regular Tuesday so if I was going to go work somewhere like in a hospital or something it would be difficult for me so I kind of stayed away from the humanities and like the, the, that type of science like the the medical sciences that's that's fascinating most yeah. people don't have that I think most people have trouble empathizing because they're so caught up in their own heads are you just thinking of other people do you place other people's needs before yours i don't know if it's that i'm certainly a people pleaser like i will certainly go out of my way to make people want like like me right and that's something that i um am dealing with just in my own life right um not always having to have somebody like me <laughs> um it's uncomfortable i'm the same way and i've well, been yeah. trying to kind of it's it's a work in progress it's, yeah it's something to somebody, work on somebody will say something and I, I used to be really bad and I was oblivious to it. And then I'll just agree with them because I don't want to go through the arguing and go through kind of that backlash of why and then try to prove my point. But that's like that's a cognitive dissonance and you're not able to be your authentic self. And then you're just shooting yourself in the foot, which, mm -hmm. yeah. And then the truth is always the best course of action. But it's just it's difficult because you are you are kind of catered to want people to like you're programmed mm -hmm. <laughs> that way that's exactly what it is fight that is it's not easy it truly is a, a a work on myself kind of deal right like i'm i find that i'm like now that i've seen what happens when i am doing too much and trying to please other people too much and don't work on myself like it's interesting um seeing seeing that and seeing kind of where you have to go right from it and like what to do about it yeah and i'd, I'd like to retract and talk about kind of the introverted uh extrovert topic mm -hmm. uh there's this idea that i came to and the idea is there are no introverts and read that the talk of introverts and extroverts it's not true there is just just a person who gravitates towards people that they agree with because in this person's argument is there are no introverts because the mo the shyest person will stay late in a party if it's a good time. So in a way, maybe you are just surrounding yourself with people who don't have the same values. Maybe your friends just suck. That's his. I don't agree with it because sometimes I feel like I want to be alone. I'm more in the. I'm the, more extroverted. Where sometimes I just you have need some to friends. have that time to kind of decongest mm -hmm. yeah, and that but, time to to think like you know to internalize everything right yeah. if you're always out there all the time you don't get that moment of introspection and that moment of like deep breath in and out right and like i totally i can see where they're coming from because i do see that sometimes right where you see like oh i never expected that person to be here this like this long or this right right like but it's like every every introvert has their group of people that they're not introverted with yeah. Right. Because yes. when, when you find your group, you just you can come out of your shell, whereas, you know, normally you kind of stick to yourself or however that works. But. Yeah, it's it's, it's interesting, like. I want to think. Ah, I'm just thinking maybe like, it's like in the general public, like when people say introverts and extroverts, maybe it's just the way they interact normally if they weren't surrounded by random people or people with varying. <sighs> kind of 
relationship uh, friendships mm-hmm, mm-hmm. maybe that's what it is maybe it's yeah. yeah maybe it's so when you meet someone new you do you feel like it's a bit of a chore to build that relationship and i'm sure you have you already have people that are close to you that you find valuable mm-hmm. and you had sh- said that you have uh, a social battery do yeah you feel that's a chore for you I think it really depends on the situation, right? So, so not usually like yesterday I ended up, um, like I left one of my classes and I went to the library to hang out because I had time between. And one of the people that was in my class was talking with a group of people. And so I went, went over to say like something about the class we were just in. And then all of a sudden I was in with this group of four people. And so then I had to kind of like, you know, be in, right. Be in, be on, be like, okay, but I was I, I sought that out. Like I was like, I don't want to just sit here alone in the library for the next three hours. I would rather, Oh, go talk to that person. Oh, all of a sudden, Hey, can I sit down and then chat? Right. And yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. Now you're making me think about it more than I've ever thought about it before. And I, it's, it's like, yeah, uh, here's the way I put it is some people give you energy. Some people drain your energy and you can usually tell. Mm-hmm. So that's where, I'm still trying to trying to navigate if I am extroverted because I, I do love to talk to people. But then there are some people that just they just <laughs> don't listen mm-hmm. and it makes it feel draining. Now I'm like, wait, maybe I'm an introvert. But then I talk to a friend. Wait, wait, wait. No, I'm an extrovert. Exactly. Yeah. That back and forth of. Yeah. It, maybe yeah. maybe maybe truly nobody is either. Yeah. And we all just have people that we find draining or. Yeah. Or, or would love to talk like to for hours on end. We're constantly learning. Right. Every day, mm-hmm. it's just like when I, the opinions I had last year, kind of the feelings I associated with certain things are they're different. There's like a the quote where it's like no man and no, no river is the same. For every day, it's the river is different. Every day, the man's different. Uh, yeah, right? I can, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, so, what advice would you give to students who are struggling to decide on a major that aligns with their passions and strengths? I say, honestly, just go and try. Don't don't fight so hard about picking the right one because you can always change and like it's your education it's your life and you can't really let you don't want to let anybody else dictate what you decide to do for yourself so sure there might be parental pressure or societal pressure for you to do a b x y but what you decide is what you should like you know um what you truly want and it's okay to change it's okay to go and be like you know what i'm gonna be a nurse and then take a year's worth of classes and realize you know what i could never be a nurse i don't like this i don't like the sight of blood or something like that right and then fully change everything or think you know what i'm gonna go into philosophy and then realize you know what i actually can't debate (laughs) for this long like this is rough and pick something totally different like I think it's like on average, there's some statistic about how the amount of people that change their major before graduating, it's like some large number, like 50% of people change their major once before graduating or some crazy thing like that. I don't quote me because I, I'm pulling it out of my ass, but no, but I see (laughs) even anecdotally, I see people that have even finished their degrees and they go, that's not for me. And then their rationalization for that is I was in too deep. Mm -hmm. I told myself two years in, this is not for me. But then if I switch now, then it's going to be a wasted take, time. Then yeah. it's third. And I, yeah, I got one more and then another one. And the next thing you know, yeah, this is not for me. <laughs> and then it's, exactly. it's yeah, you graduate late, but, with a degree in something and yeah, you go, I actually don't yeah, want to use and, this. Like, mm-hmm. Well, I even then that's like a, to expand on that too, that's a, with anything that you do in mm-hmm. life. And you had mentioned that you follow what you're passionate about. Follow with bio, you didn't like bio. So why stick with that? You like numbers more and you won't truly, truly know unless you're in it. Mm-hmm. And to be, it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to, it's not, it's not that you wasted it. It's just, you no, it's le- just experience you, learned, you gained. And yeah, then you, you learned that it's not for you. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a success. Like a lot of people are scared of failure and like, if you don't you. fail, you never, you never, you'll never yeah. succeed. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, you're so scared to get a scratch on your knee. Then how are you supposed to learn how to walk? If we all thought that way, 
we wouldn't survive. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, with math and engineering, uh, do you have any advice for people that are struggling in that field? And they are passionate about it, but it seems that they do. It is a a high workload. It truly is. It truly is. It's it's a lot of work and it's a lot of, and I honestly, I actually don't know what it looks like here because I didn't do it here. It's pretty similar though. It's probably very similar. All I know is that, um, you know, it's one of those high turnover, um, yes. Um, majors, right. Where it's, they, they let in a thousand kids and only 200 of them get to second year kind of deal. Like it's one of those very high turnover. They not, there's not very many that, that always that complete first year. Um, but I mean, if, if you are, if you want to be in something and you're struggling with it, you just have to like find avenues with which you can succeed personally. So, okay. You're struggling with a math class. Find someone who can help you find a friend, find, get a tutor. Like don't, don't just struggle for no reason when you have, um, like options and, um, facilities available to help you succeed. Like the engineering department has a success center. Like they have a place where you can go if you want help with with a with a concept or understanding how to do this. And like use those. Don't you know? Don't not use them because you're like too proud of yourself. Yeah, it's okay to ask for help. <laughs> we can't get through life alone if we're thinking that oh, I just I don't want to have to be the person that gets a tutor. It's embarrassing mm-hmm. or ask a friend or help and. The reason you're there is probably because of a parent, it's because of that friend that you had in high school, that a constant encouragement who, who breastfed you, who provided snacks in your lunch box and gave you lunch. And I don't think you did that when you were a kid, but all by yourself, no. you probably didn't have a job. And if you didn't have parents, there was, there was some sort of guardian in your life mm-hmm. and yeah, getting through it's to not have shame and asking for help and like find other tools because there are tools uh, another person uh, one person may think that grinding for eight hours straight is their optimal way to succeed yeah that's then, how they study they, yeah. they just sit down they just read their stuff yeah. or they write it all yeah. out a million times somebody mm-hmm. else might go okay i can't do that for that long i can need only... a friend yeah. yeah like i i do it all the time i need um in my family we call it body doubling if i say I need to like get my room clean or you know do an assignment i'll just have somebody else come be in the room with me they're not gonna we could be we could be chatting we could be not chatting they could be working on their own thing but if they're there physically then all of a sudden i get my shit done that's fascinating yeah it's interesting communication isn't dialogue lots of the time i think there's many studies where body language and kind of eye contact and your smile and the frown on your face it communicates a lot more than words Mm -hmm. i mean being there with a family member or friend you guys don't have to say anything but it's that they're there for you Mm -hmm. and that's that's really fascinating actually is this uh, original unique to your family um i think it's i i don't i don't know i don't think it's original like that the name might be but it certainly is out there as a um like a like a tactic that people with ADHD can use and it's there's been some studies done about just yeah having somebody in the room and like <clears throat> I've seen a couple um like there's a guy on TikTok who has ADHD and does all these great TikToks about ADHD and one of the, one of my favorite ones is his buddy calls him and goes hey I'm coming over in like an hour so then buddy you know freaks out cleans his whole house and yeah. then an hour goes by and a guy doesn't show up and he calls him and he's like, Hey, are you coming over? And he's like, no, I just wanted you to clean your house <laughs> <laughs> because, because I knew you would do it if you thought I was coming. And, yeah. and like, so something like that, right. Where it's like, you just need that little bit of a kick in the pants and like a little bit of help from in mm-hmm. whatever and um, sense that may be. Funny that you mentioned that too, is when you show up unannounced to someone's house that is a true representation of how clean their house is. Mm-hmm. But when there's a plan, when there's a party, that's all day of cleaning and mm-hmm. making there's, sure it's presentable. You, you get that set up and everything. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like, yeah, no, that's a definitely, that's a good friend. You know, knows, totally, totally. Needs to clean your house. So 
make me a little bit <laughs> mad because you were expecting your friend to yeah, come. Right. But, I mean, yeah, but you know, he wants the best for you. It's the, it's, yeah. It's the thought that counts there. Right. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. it's, you know, he does the little skits and everything, but, <laughs> uh, so you have been dancing for since you were three. Yeah. Three years old. So at this point it would be 20 years. Wow. It's which amazing. is crazy to me. Yeah. And then <laughs> it's like, usually dancing is a female dominated yeah, industry. Yeah, it, it really is. It really is. Dance, um, specifically like competitive dance at a young from, you know, six, age six and up is very um, <clears throat> like female forward. It's I'm not actually sure why. I feel like it's just one of those things that girls dance and guys play sports kind of thing right like or girls do gymnastics and guys play sports right like it's just kind yeah, of how it happens it just guys just think it's i don't know it's feminine but yeah, then it could something. also be really manly i've seen a lot of guys who are built and you could actually build a lot of muscle yeah, in dancing get- it takes a lot of power Mm -hmm. to get yourself off the ground and like to be able to to jump and to maneuver your body yeah 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 and that depends what kind of dancing but Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. totally but like there's there's been you know lots of times like a hockey goalie or a hockey player or a football player will go and take a ballet class because learning how to balance yourself and how to keep your everything super tight is really useful for other sports and it, uh, I heard ballet is uh, disciplined oriented. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot. Of, very... I talked to some uh, some of my friends, and they do ballet, and they tell me the rigorous training. Like it is those those girls, the the men that are in ballet, they look really fit, and it looks like they like for the average person, right? They just look healthy, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of work in those the. Oh, it, what's what's it called when you tip oh when you're on point on point yeah, yeah. that's that's you it's usually females um guys mm-hmm. can do it but they tend not to and it's yeah, you mm-hmm. literally are standing on like the tips of your toes like you Is, know imagine just like walking around like this for 20 minutes at a time like and precision you, and oh yeah, yeah, it's just like it's killer. And you kind of you kind of wad up the other side so your pinky toe isn't is actually being useful because otherwise you're just only on your big toe all the time. It's, yeah. it's rough. You but need to incorporate all of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's it truly is like it's almost like a martial art. You, like when you learn a martial art, it's like okay, hey, here here are the forms, and you repeat them, and you learn them, and then you do a test. And then you can learn newer forms, right? Once you've passed the test of knowing those forms and knowing those moves. Um, ballet is very similar in that respect because it's, you have to know all of your positions. You have to be perfectly positioned in every movement and you have certain things that you do at certain levels. Um, <clears throat> and there are, there are two major like forms of ballet that there's, um, oh, I'm going to forget them now, but there are two major ones and they just they're they're like it's like two different martial arts right there's two different uh, sort of systems and um like i i learned the one and i actually never did any exams um all the girls in my class always did and they would they would teach the girls they would teach all the exam related things they would like and you had to memorize the exercises right you had to have everything perfect because you would go in and they would say now we're going to do tondus and then you would stand at the bar and you would do your tondu exercise and they would watch you and then judge based on it. Was it that good enough or do you need to keep working on it? And then you would go up the levels that way. Um, but me and the other two guys that were in my level. Um, it was Ma- Max. It was Max. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was I, did, I wasn't sure. But um, yeah. So me and Max, we never got to we never did exams. Um. And so we never got to learn the, like we learned the same stuff as the girls did. But if you do exams as boys, you get different moves and you do boy stuff. And so because we never did exams, they never really focused on how to do ballet as a guy. And so for the two of us, we kind of had a bit of a, like a, like a lack of like male ballet because I mean, when we were kids, we didn't really want to be there. And because it was, you know, you had to be perfectly postured and stand there for however long. Right. And it isn't always the most glamorous. Right. Like 
usually that's the thing that you get yelled oh you do ballet haha ha, right as a boy yeah yeah so you know you didn't always want to be in ballet class and so they said you know what it's fine we'll just move them up with the girls mm. and so you know i learned everything i never did an exam um they've changed it now at my studio so that the, those the boys do do the exams and so they they have like a separate they even have like a guys only ballet class now for mm. for the guys who are then learning the male portion of the, the thing because it's really hard to spend time in any class doing okay everybody does these moves and then only half of you do these ones or the majority do these ones and then like these three yeah. people do this separate thing but what if you're a guy and you want to learn the girl moves go for it yeah they they allow that yeah go for yeah. it there's actually a guy at my studio right now who is i think he's 16 or 17 and he actually goes on point he has point shoes oh dope. um yeah which is like good for him love yeah. it great yeah that's not great. my thing but yeah. go for it yeah. like <laughs> uh so how has your experience been like as a male dancer in musical theater and field often dominated by women my experience was well it was on and off because i did also play sports right like i played hockey i played football i played football for three years um and so it was interesting because like you got, you get the, you kind of get it from both sides, right? Being a guy in the dance class with all the girls, you're in a class with all girls. So some, you know how girls are sometimes it's not always easy to be in a group full of hormonal girls who are also growing up the same as you. So sometimes you're their best friend and sometimes you're ousted. And then on the flip side, if you're hanging out with the guys at school, it's sometimes you're in, sometimes you're like, yeah, you hang out with the girls all the time. And sometimes it's like, oh, what are you doing? You're a dancer. Like what's going on here, man. Yeah. Right. And it's an interesting, like it's the interesting dichotomy of like how that works. Right. Well, I mean, for girls, they're less direct. Mm -hmm. They they'll talk behind your back and they don't like you. They'll be nice in front of your face. And then, later on they'll tell all their friends and usually that's kind of how i've i have some some very close uh friends that are mm -hmm. girls and they yeah it's weird because they operate differently when going about dilemmas which exactly. is guys you just say yeah would you say to me yeah, exactly. i don't like you, that and then you just sort it out mm -hmm. girls it's like a like a chess game you know <laughs> like, that's, you that's so true and that's and, like yeah mm -hmm. i feel like the like i mean the hardest thing was just kind of coming to terms with that I'm okay with being the only guy or that I'm okay with being a guy in this situation. And that like, I'm not going to let anyone else's thoughts influence me. Right. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to care about what the guys in high school are saying. Like, Oh, haha, ha, you're a dancer. I'm just going to be like, whatever, man. I like what I do. This is your passion. Like, and I, like I don't care about that. You said that, like, who cares? Yeah. And society, they'll try to steer you a certain way mm -hmm. because, Oh, it's, it's a girl sport. Why would you, why would you want to do that? I mean, I just find it interesting and it's not because I'm wanting to be around girls more. It's not because of this, not because of it. It's just mm -hmm. because I find joy in it. And this exactly. is that so bad? Exactly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. What? You, mm -hmm. I also love playing video games. Is that going to, you're going to yell at yeah. me for that too? Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like people that usually question other people's actions and kind of interests if they're not hurting anyone and they're judging them for it, it's usually a problem with them. Mm -hmm. It's a self. You know? It's a self. Like I'm yeah. putting this yeah. out there because I can't, don't like something about myself. So I'm going to take it out on you. Yeah. It's like, I'll put you down so I can lift myself mm -hmm. up. But then they keep, they'll keep doing that open up until they meet their match and exactly relationships get tarnished and their reputation gets tarnished and nobody wants to be around a person that, puts other people down just mm -hmm. for their interests. Mm -hmm. But how do you handle stereotypes or misconceptions about men in dance and what impact do you think your presence has on breaking down those barriers? So that's a, you know, it's a big two parter, right? So stereotypes are totally one thing, right? When I was on a football team, they called me twinkle toes because yeah. I was a dancer. Did that bother you? And it did, you know what? It did a little bit right when it first started happening because it was like the coach didn't like me very much and he gave me this nickname and I was kind of like, ah, you know, like yeah, come here, twinkle toes. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like where it's like, all right, come on, twinkle toes, like one yeah. of those. So 
that didn't make me feel great, right? Didn't make and me feel great. He's essentially calling you like a pussy. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what it is. Like, right? That's the, 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 that was the inflection, right? It wasn't that word. Yeah, it like wasn't, you can't complain to your parents. Like, yeah, Twinkle Toes. Like, yeah, just joke, just a joke. But yeah, like, yeah, you, you know, it's yeah. like, well, and I had pretty good footwork, right? Because yeah. it was, I was, I was quick mm-hmm. with my feet because I'm a dancer, right? So there was like a little bit of good and a little bit of bad. And so, yeah, when it first happened, I was like, I don't like this. And then I was like, no, nah, screw it. I am Twinkle Toes. I like yeah. it. And I was like, I just kind of embraced it and I took it on and I was like, you accept it. Yeah. You ever, uh, you ever seen Eight Mile? I have not. Well, there's like the ending. I don't, I don't want to spoil it. You can't just spoil it. Yeah, spoil it. I don't care. <laughs> so in the end, he has this rap battle and he just essentially wins the rap battle by talking about all his insecurities and vulnerabilities and accepting all that. That's awesome. And you find that the people that accept themselves their flaws if they're get getting made fun of for that scar in their face for the thing that the behavior that they do that they have no control over and other people make fun of them for it Mm -hmm. when you take that and make it your own all the power to you Mm -hmm. versus when you know when other people get made fun of and they give that reaction of you can tell that they're really insecure about it but they don't revel in it they don't accept it and so mm-hmm. it comes off as insecure. It comes mm-hmm. off as, wow, this person is weak. But when you take that and you go, yeah, I am Twinkle Toes. Like, yeah, I, I am a dancer. Yeah. I was like, and it makes me better at what I do here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. B- having this background makes me a better football player in this context. Yeah. And like, that was helpful, right? Having that like, the like take it like it's my kind of thing was was mm-hmm. good um and i mean the other big like you're a dancer stereotype is that all male dancers are gay and yeah. like i'm not like i'm not gay um and i'm still kind of in that like world of figuring out what exactly i am and of like course. yeah i feel like have i gone to the gay bar and enjoyed it yeah it's great it's a great fun time have I also gone and, you know, been on dates with women and had fun? Yeah, I have. So, you know what? Like you it, discover yourself. Exactly. And it's like, it doesn't yeah. just because I was a dancer doesn't mean that I'm gay. Right. And, yeah. but it also doesn't mean that I'm not allowed to then decide to later or, or like find out that out for myself at some point. Yeah. Right. As long and as like, you're not hurting anyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Who's to say why you can't be, a person that you want to be and you discover yourself. Exactly. And exactly. Yeah. That's just, it's, and it's always just interesting, right? Because that's usually the first list that people go, right. They kind of, and then they kind of, they always want to make fun of you for it. And it's like, what's so funny about loving someone really? Like what's so funny about, okay, I like a guy. What? I don't get it. Like what's so funny about it? You're like, yeah. you like boys. Okay. And, it's just the lack of understanding because if you if you take another person that likes bongo drumming and mm-hmm. you try to envision yourself just liking those bongo you you never could and then maybe in the cheapest way to under to to absorb that like very malicious way too is to say oh that person is different they have a bad mind Mm -hmm. they are unhealthy Mm -hmm. they are subjugated they should be wrong change (laughs) Mm -hmm. and they don't take the time to actually talk to that person like i guarantee you a lot of these barriers would be brought down when you take the time to understand someone because there is a reason for the things that they do albeit maybe people are just psychopaths. There's still a reason. Right? Mm-hmm. You take the time to truly understand it. And you had mentioned that you are a very empathetic person. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure you know what it's like to, when somebody shares a something to you. Maybe in at first you were a bit judgy. You're like, why is this person the way they are? But then mm-hmm. once you break down the, uh, have that icebreaker and you get to know who they truly are, this is just another human being. Mm-hmm. Totally. Just, and everybody has you know, quirks and, and loves and like things that make them who they are and like learning and navigating other people's 
things that make them who they are is something that you have to do. That's how you have to have relationships, right? That's how you have to um, like live your life and like be able to build everybody up. Yeah. I say you need to understand yourself more too. Mm -hmm. For you to be able to love others, you need to be able to d accept the bad in yourself mm -hmm. and liberate yourself from these insecurities that you have accept yourself for who you are mm -hmm. don't be ashamed of it mm -hmm. that easier said than done oh, it's God, probably yeah. the hardest thing to do because it's the it's never just oh i can't accept myself one day and then the next it's forever like that mm -hmm. no it's that constant affirmation of yeah. i'll be fine i'll be okay mm -hmm. and then support and when you recognize that that is the real reality of the human mind you realize that oh these people are suffering we are all suffering and we need to be there for each other mm -hmm. and we're and pretty much that we're all humans yeah regardless of anything else right like yeah we're all people yeah i read this uh book in the man's search for meaning and talked about like the, hu the human race as a whole mm -hmm. the same people that put other people in a gas chamber in the holocaust mm -hmm. The same is the same person, right? That that goes in it. It's just we're all just destruction can be so, is propagated by other humans. I find that so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it's like there's no easy answer to that. It gets no, really there's deep, not. But it's just yeah. If we just truly understand each other, you know, but then like, everything's gonna be great. It's yeah. just kumbaya, man. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. But but it's much more difficult than that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah but what advice would you give to other guys who are interested in pursuing dance or other fields that are typically female dominated don't don't quit because somebody said something mean or don't don't give up on the something that you like because of others if if you truly like what you do then do it like there's that's that's pretty much it like if you if you love what you do continue doing it don't give it up for any reason um like any reason that is not your own take some time to reflect mm -hmm. and, and i mean it's not always easy being like i always had a rough time if i was the only guy in a class like it's like even in even in like school um if it's like I'm the only one in there, you don't have somebody you can instantly relate to. Yeah. Right? Because the, like the having another sheep. guy, you just have that like you you have a little bit of that like, oh, I pro I know probably what's gonna happen when I talk to him. Right? That's yeah. kind of the thing. Whereas um if you're the only one, then it's it's easy to be kind of afraid and you have to like step away from that and don't let that a little bit of fear stop you from doing things that you would enjoy or do enjoy. Mm -hmm. Society is going to steer you into a direction and you have to ask yourself whether this is truly what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And sure, mm -hmm. there's you are influenced by society. Oh, Don't totally. be wrong. Like, well, you're influenced by your parents and your friends everything. and the internet and everything that you've seen but or eaten. And... Taking that into account, all the influences mm -hmm. and what you want, where where are you happiest? Mm -hmm. Because sure, what you truly want to do is move in a cave and never talk to anyone. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> but then, that, is that the healthiest thing in the kind of the the balance of society? What you want, mm -hmm. probably not. Mm -hmm. You know, that you're probably gonna. Not. Definitely, you could take the hedonist route and just do a bunch of blow and go. Yeah, exactly. And it's just, it's just asking yourself the right questions and not and being patient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and being mm -hmm. like comfortable deciding to do it or to not do it. Right, like, um, there's some guys at my dance studio right now. There was a big group of brothers. There was like I think five or six brothers, and they were all dancers. Mm -hmm. And one of them is graduating this year. And the younger brother who was there with him decided he didn't want to do it anymore. Okay, cool. Didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. But like 
And then again, you know, one of the other younger brothers is still in it, wants to keep doing it. And one of the younger brothers who wasn't ever a dancer started dancing. So it's like, don't just again. Yeah. Yeah. Accept them for their decisions. And if they speak through your actions, if they, if you're a brother and you really want that other brother to dance with you, instead of chastising them about their decision, you just show them how much fun you're having. Mm -hmm. And then Live let them life? choose for themselves yeah. and kind of be yeah. like, hope, yeah. be like, you know, hey, here's this really cool thing that I'm doing. If you want to come do it, great. If you don't, also great. Like, yeah. And I find there's endless opportunity in life mm -hmm. to, you can be a dancer, you can go into swimming, you can choose this class, but there's, there's only a limited yeah. amount of time. Mm -hmm. so you really have to allocate your resources to the one that truly matters because mm -hmm. you can absorb all this information. And Oliver Berkman has this idea of decide in advance what you want to suck at. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's a, you're sure you want to be the greatest swimmer, right? Maybe you want to be the best public speaker, right? You want to be into books and into philosophy. You, maybe you want to do everything, but you, you can't be good at everything. Right. I don't know. Maybe humans in the future will have the ability to be great at every, everything. Yeah. They'll just put a chip in and then yeah, all of a sudden kind know of everything like the, kind of deal. Have you seen the matrix? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I just watched that recently. <laughs> Blew my mind. Yeah. But so how has your involvement involvement in both math and musical theater shaped your understanding of gender and identity? I really think that like as a dancer majority, it um it kind of so when you're in the theater world and you're in the world of performing arts, things are very fluid, right? And like I've done drag and I've been a performer in that respect of like putting on this character and putting on this costume and you know becoming a woman for a while. And so the whole like thing about identity is that you have to be, you know, comfortable enough to express yourself and then also comfortable enough to then try new things. And like, I'm very comfortable in the fact that I'm a boy and like, but also I would gladly put on some fake boobs and dance around and be a woman for a while. And that's fun. And I and find that fun. That's acting. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, and it's a character and it's like, I put that on and it's a character mm -hmm. and it's the same. It's the same as if I was playing any character, right? It's, but it's, um, yeah, but it's just, it's just fun for a while. Right. Sometimes that's, that's what it is. And, um, I find that like, again, in the theater world, you get a lot of the people that are experimenting with, who they are and they're experimenting with identity. They're, they're choosing to use different pronouns because they want to see how that makes them feel. And if that makes them feel more validated or, or however they, however that helps. And, um, yeah, it's very, I feel like the world that I live in is a very open world in terms of that particular topic, like identity and gender and all the things. And, um, sure, you're going to get a straight white guy, but you're also going to get, you know, a non-binary person who wants to use he, they pronouns on Monday and then she, they pronouns on, on Wednesday. What does that side think of conservatives? I want to say, I mean, they don't necessarily have a great opinion of conservatives i mean both sides don't both the, both <laughs> yeah. sides don't have a great opinion yeah. of either right like if you are a very liberal person you usually don't like the conservatives and if you don't if you're a very conservative person don't like the liberals exactly did, exactly but i'd say they can be friends like politics aside totally. they have something whether it be a video game whether it be a, a tv show totally. whether it be something they're interested in everybody relates to something and it's yeah. you don't have to you know your views on whatever don't usually have to get be involved in that yeah because i have i have friends who are hardcore liberal I have friends that are hardcore conservative and oh I, yeah oh yeah i was in all the groups yeah i have i like, love them for who they are and they're mm -hmm. not they're not bad people they're they're they have their opinions and usually it's from the perspective of how will 
this helps society and they mm-hmm. they have their beliefs because they think one so one belief is damaging society and it's never radical really no Maybe, it's usually it's usually yeah. it's usually very like everything is so niche especially because everything comes from your own experiences right yes if you've been around if you've if you've been around someone who has transitioned well you're going to be way more comfortable with trans people than if you've never been around it and you and you see it as something that's scary right and so like it truly just it comes from experience like yeah the being understanding or open about new things is easier if you've experienced similar th- topics right or similar things and it's like it's not easy to accept something that you have no experience with right and um i feel like that's what's happening you probably have a younger brother who's in school right now um and like they've decided the government decided that there are no phones allowed in school anymore yeah i don't know if you heard about this but this I mean, year like the alberta government decided probably be that, helpful you know, that I probably, all bro i probably needed that <laughs> honestly so, i was so, addicted bro. so here's the thing right okay most of the students are freaking out about it right They're because did that a lot of these kids are addicted but like um well they're, they're freaking out about it just because it's um because it's new and different right and it's not easy for them to accept it because they haven't experienced it so i feel like the kids who are currently you know grade four or five when they get to high school and they have no phones well they'll they'll be fine with it because they've experienced it for however long whereas like right now everybody's like oh my god it's the worst thing ever this sucks but actually it's it might be useful it might be useful it might also not be useful right it's gonna it's gonna close some avenues that were there before like it's way harder to do a kahoot if you can't pull your phone out to then answer all the questions but at the same time every student or at least um here has a, a device of some kind so there is other avenues like you they still all have a laptop or a chromebook so you know not having a phone isn't the end of the world and it's just it's just hard to gra- or hard to come to terms with when it comes from that higher power that you have nothing to do with right because yeah. the government said so the alberta government said you know no more phones in classrooms all of alberta yeah it's yeah they 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 started doing it but in I a could, couple I schools could get behind last that. year i could get behind that i mean i mean i'm not I'm in school anymore and for like i didn't really have a phone when i was in elementary school right like healthy like we only, I mean, we only really got cell phones in like grade seven, eight is kind of when they blew up. Like when the yeah. iPhones came out and Even stuff. Even then I was still quite young. I know I was looking at Instagram. It was giving me a lot of anxiety. A yeah. Lot of, because you get all the all, really too much my feedback head. or not enough feedback or everything yeah. is very like. Everybody is perfect on there. The popular mm-hmm. people, they were living the best lives. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then they were also comparing themselves to other kids. And yeah, I know it's, it's, everything is rough. Yeah. And, like, and then mm-hmm. the, the birth of the phone was revolutionary. And they thought, oh, what could go wrong? It just makes us more connected. But mm-hmm. now too much connection is actually disconnection. It's, it's so yeah. hard to be so connected all the time. Like, yeah. being, like years ago, you, you used to leave work. And then you couldn't like until you showed up the next day, nobody could say anything to you. Yeah. Right now it's like, okay, well, Email, I leave work. Text. My boss can call me at any moment and be like, actually, I need you to do this, this, or and this. Or you could be, stay connected to your partner the entire day. You guys are texting back and forth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I just don't think that's healthy. You know? It's like, not. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, I agree. I agree yeah. because I've had, I've had relationships that have actually deteriorated because of that connection. Too much connection. Yeah. Because you're, actually, and then you, and then you like, once it's gone, you like, you almost go through like withdrawals of like, yeah. I don't have anyone to text right now. What is yeah, going what on? What am I doing? I'm sending the memes every 20 seconds. Yeah, I'm because... texting every 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. We're snapping. We're also on TikTok. We're also on X and we're on Facebook. And it's, yeah. The yeah when you're having two different conversations on two different platforms, you're like having oh. a conversation about 
a on snapchat and then over text you're having a conversation about b yeah like i've done you've, you've done that i've done I've that i've done that i've done you're... three like three mm-hmm. platforms the instagram the instagram, instagram uh, dms Facebook, and then the the, uh, the Snap. snapchat and the texting that, for me at least <laughs> yeah. oh my god yeah no it's it's rough definitely uh but yeah to connect that to kind of gender identity and yeah you won't it's not easy to accept something that you don't have an experience right that yeah that comes from a higher comes from a higher power a higher place so it's like yeah the blanket kind of this is okay now isn't easy for people to accept yeah because but they don't see the people in it they just see the the things they can be angry about for me i was hardcore conservative growing up i mean only recently have i really changed my stance and I was under the impression of, okay, this is something that I don't understand. I've heard all these people that I look up to say it's unhealthy and that they have a mental health issue. Mm -hmm. But sure, maybe that is the case. But I heard this, uh, I shared about it with you on the phone where Mm -hmm. this, uh, one of my coworkers, his name's Rob, phenomenal guy, outstanding father and mentor, and he's a great friend to me. And he had a daughter that transitioned and yeah. he was just super compassionate about it and i've never seen that level of compassion and patience and what ended up happening is after like a couple years maybe three four years the girl didn't want to go through with the full transition but either way rob loved her for who she is mm-hmm transition or not mm-hmm. and i feel that that's such a g- good paradigm to approach both sides mm-hmm. right if you have if you're not hurting anyone and you just want to explore and try it love is the answer as cheesy as that sounds mm-hmm. that is what will break down these barriers of just animosity and hate and anger and, and yeah. if you look at that person they're confused they don't understand what's going on you don't either i don't understand what's going on mm-hmm. right then to have it from that perspective, or, or yeah, what about this study? Uh, the hormones and all this. Mm-hmm. You don't actually know. Like, sure, you know. Maybe you are highly educated. Maybe you've been through stuff. You don't actually know what that person's going through. Mm-hmm. And you, yeah. and like every individual is so different, right? Yes. And every individual's journey through a transition, or even just like changing their name, is so different. Like my. Uh, my cousin actually decided uh, to change his name um, and he stayed still a guy. He still he didn't transition or anything. He didn't do anything like Just that. Change his name. He yeah, he grew up. He was he was born Adam and then grew up his whole life. And eventually he, he came out and he after he came out, he said, you know what? I want to change my name. And he so he changed his name to Xavier. So now his name is Xavier. There we go. And like, I mean, that was it. Like, that's pretty that's much it. it. Like, I mean, it's, like you could say, oh, yeah, but you were born with like. He just wants to change his name. And he like, wasn't happy with being Adam. Maybe yeah, he can like, let him. Let him yeah, change. Let him. Who cares? Like, is mm-hmm. it? Are you? Is he stabbing a knife onto other people's backs? Like, yep. is he screwing <laughs> hates? Uh, exactly. No, he's just changing his name. Yeah. And you could argue, oh, but what if everyone changes their names? Sure, everyone can change their names. Okay. Yeah. What, what are yeah. nicknames if not somebody changing their name? Yeah. I like, I changed my name. I yeah. was born. I'm born Jackson. My ID says Jackson on it, but I go by yeah. Jack. Yeah, like that's that and is to, fully. I changed my name. And to but. expand that, I feel that a lot of people imposter syndrome is a big problem. Mm-hmm. I experienced it here and there, where the kind of that disconnect of who you are, like why you deserve this, and why why is everything happening to you on a on a level where okay, you're experiencing all these good things and achievement, but why you right? It's like an imposter. You don't deserve this, right? But. Every day is a new day. We mm-hmm. all transform. And mm-hmm. you from a year ago is a completely different Jack than you are now. Oh, completely. Completely. And, it's and, just, I, mm-hmm. and if you talk to that Jack from a year ago, maybe you guys have a great deal of similarities, but you guys will argue <laughs> you know, totally. on certain topics. Totally. totally. And totally. it's not until maybe that former Jack experiences that life changing thing mm-hmm. or learns that information or makes friends with that person that just makes them see life in a different lens Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. it's just you go oh okay and then that's that's what it is totally yeah Yeah. totally and like yeah what role does self-expression play in your identity both as a student in a traditionally male dominated field and as a dancer in a female dominated one so my like 
personal self-expression, right? The way I like to, you know, dress, show up, do all the things. Um, currently I've got a big giant beard, right? Like I, and I wasn't allowed to have that when I was a dancer because, yeah. you know, everything had to, you had to be clean shaven. You had to be, thing. I used to shave my chest. Yeah. Like I used to fully shave my chest. Like I am a, but the I'm beard's a, looking a pretty, good, Dan. The beard's looking good. Is there you. Are you using any, <laughs> any products? I want to grow one of mine, but it's, <laughs> it's just really hard with the, with the Asian genetics, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So do you have any tips? Any, oh, honestly, what, what did it for me was just letting it grow out and look kind of like crap for a while. And then yeah. eventually it, it's it filled in enough that I was like, okay, you know what? It yeah. kind of looks okay. And then I just trim it, trim it back every once in a while. Like whenever I go to the, to get a haircut, I trim the beard back a little bit. And, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really do much. I just kind of like stopped shaving. <laughs> and just, just the genetics and not the greatest patience. thing to say. Like, but. Uh, <laughs> people with beards just look like they know what they're talking about i don't know do you ever, do you ever i i like, find i look so much older right like i yeah. i don't i don't look Wis 23 wisdom <laughs> yeah it has, it has that wisdom if you shave that off you have 10 years oh yeah you have 10 years off oh yeah for sure for sure and i went with a mustache for a while and it did not look good mm -hmm. it was not it so yeah. um yeah i <laughs> i had a few moments mm -hmm. over at school where i was like all right, I'm, I'm done. I'm shaving it. And then I would like shave. I would just like shave yeah. some of it off and then be like, oh, no, <laughs> I can't get rid uh, of it all. So then I, I went with a mustache. It did yeah. not look great. great. But, <laughs> but going, going back to. I think I we were there. We kind of got sidetracked a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, um, you, and I was so I wasn't allowed to have a beard when I was dancing. Fair. Right. And so when I stopped being a, a dancer in terms of like competition dance and like at a studio, I instantly grew a beard because that was a form of my self-expression. I could express myself by having this thing on my face because I wasn't allowed to before. What does that beard mean to you? <laughs> Sorry, it, means, going back to, it means not that, that I get to be who I, I want to be. There and I'm not go. being, I'm not being told that I can't have it. And do, some, do I sometimes want to shave it off? Yeah. It's would I shave it off. If I ever wanted to do drag again, I would, because I would rather be clean faced and do drag over bearded drag which is totally a thing good on the guys who want to do it not not the look that i want to go Very for versatile yeah respect yeah um and uh yeah like that was one of the things that i finally got to express like that was a self-expression thing i got to have my beard i got i wanted it i got to have it it's great and but there are times where like i have a i have a shirt with um it's got like a little pocket and on it is mickey mouse but it's rainbow it's like a little mickey mouse head and it's rainbow okay and there are places where i choose to not wear that shirt because i do sometimes like you know want to conform right like i'm probably if i'm gonna go watch the hockey game probably not gonna wear that shirt to watch the hockey game and yeah hey, you want to wear an if you're watching the Oilers, you want to be a part of that team. Well, it's not even that. It's just like that's a that's an area where it's like, you know, guys and we do guy stuff where it's like, OK, maybe I don't want to wear the rainbow thing that kind of points to the fact that I'm queer. Right. And so. Like. I find that I do still currently need to kind of get over that aspect in my self-expression where it comes out when I talk and I'm not shy about it but it's also like i don't choose always to I, I choose to i pick and choose where i wear that shirt and i pick and choose where i wear certain clothing items um because of it which is again something that i'm working on right i'm per, i'm working on that i'm yeah you see trying to get better yeah. yeah you see if this is okay how does it my is this sacrificing my well-being or is this actually doing good for me my mm -hmm. by conforming to this group yeah to the situation is it, yeah is it, is it, is it actually, more beneficial or is it yeah, worse or is it drawing out and am i not myself my unhappy and it's just trying mm -hmm. right it, totally if you have an idea as long as it's not hurting anyone <laughs> then yeah of course we go for it and then yeah it's just definitely yeah, very brave of you to be able to be versatile and try all these different things and not to conform to society mm -hmm. do what you want and 
we don't actually know what we want. We can just keep trying. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I've surrendered myself to that. Mm. I'm the, the, I don't actually know. Yeah, I'm just going to yeah, just try like all the things. Socratic method of questioning everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm, mm -hmm. I am very religious. So I place my, kind of my well being onto God for the things that I don't understand. And yeah, I just, I, I just want to come like, I just want to live. <laughs> totally. totally. Yeah. I find that I'm less religious now than I was. Mm -hmm. And yet, like, I've got a, I have a goddaughter. And like my family is quite, my grandmother is quite religious and, but yeah, both like my mom and I are kind of struggling right now with what's happening within the, the Catholic church and like how it's being presented yeah. here in town. And like, yeah. it's just, I'm spiritual and I feel like I do have a connection with God and it's like, but my way of expressing it isn't necessarily going to church every Sunday. Yeah. It's your relationship with God and how yeah. you treat others. And mm -hmm. I find How do that you like make an impact. Exactly. The best yeah. thing is just to take the teachings and to like, my mom says it best. She says, I just want you to be good and kind and loving. And that's what God wants. And yeah. so, right. He's not, he's not saying you have to be at church every week and you have to be doing this. You have to be doing okay. that. He's saying, be a good person and good things will come back to you. Yeah. And I, I believe in karma wholeheartedly man like mm -hmm. when i when i do good i just get good things when i do bad i get bad things happen yeah. to me it's so i don't know maybe it's because i actually connect these two like oh i, I got that because of something that i did four days ago or sometimes it's instant karma sometimes it's like delayed karma mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but even that if I, if people just if this was an actual rule imagine if, like if this is like a fundamental rule imagine how much it's like gravity karma is like yeah, gravity. yeah they found an equation you you discovered <laughs> yeah, yeah, the law for the, karma <laughs> yeah turn you proved it you got a Nobel P prize yeah and yeah. <laughs> it's, it it's, turns out that if you give someone money you just get doubled the money it's like an infinite like <laughs> it's an infinite money glitch real quick yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you think society's views on gender roles are changing and what impact do you ha hope to have in that conversation through your own experiences i think i mean they're certainly changing right and like they're changing very quickly and i find that that's a little it's hard sometimes how, how fast things change and i think that like it's not it's not easy to navigate every situation and because things change so quickly, um, the situations also then change. So if, you know, if I'm prepared for situation A, but then situation A is morphed into situation A plus, well, I was prepared for A. I'm not prepared for A plus. So it's like, it's, it's hard to navigate that, that quickly changing world. Um, especially in terms of like, what is okay to say? And what is now taboo and what is like um all of a sudden like a slur or a swear and it's not necessarily easy to um like cater to every single every single thing that is happening and like it's very um it's a very complex and, you know, difficult world we have, right? And honestly, I think that um, the only thing that, like, I want to put out there is good vibes, <laughs> truly, right? Like, me personally, I just want to be someone that anybody can come up and talk to or that you know what if you're having a rough day let me help you out and it doesn't matter where you come from what your background is what you're looking for in the moment and like that like you know i'm mad at i'm mad about you know abc well i don't care what you're mad about tell me about it and i'll be a backboard for you because maybe maybe you're just mad at yourself. You're not actually mad at something. You want people to be able to discover themselves through 
talking yeah, through just and being through connecting. Well, just yeah, just through being like open, right? And like being open to any experience and everything. And like I um I dated a girl when I was in the States who when I met them, they used he him pronouns. And I was like, Yeah, love it. Great. I love him. And then slowly throughout the course of our relationship, it switched from he to they, and then it was they for a really long time, and then it's it ended up morphing back over to to she, which is what it started with when they were born. And so like that experience. Did they transition? They not really. Or- they thought about it. They changed their name. They decided, hey, you know what? Maybe I want to be a boy. I'm gonna i I'm gonna bind for a while. I'm gonna do all the things. And then kind of decided, you know what? I actually preferred the other way around. Like I just they just needed that. It was one of the it was one of the cases where no, you're not allowed to do this ever. So they got away from that world. And went, I can do whatever I want, so I'm going to do it. Yeah. And then decided, you know what? Actually, I've tried it. I don't care for it. I'm going to go back to kind of how I was. Yeah. What ends up when you're told not to do something, it makes you want to do it even more. Thus the beard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. When people tell you you can't be someone, you can't be something, I always want to, it's like a, a very, using that as fuel to proliferate your success and ideas like the best uh a quote is the best revenge is massive success but then Mm -hmm. you think about it once you're successful did you actually put in all that work for that person like did you yeah did you (laughs) actually that thing that somebody said to you in high school that person that was mean to you did you become a millionaire make seven figures per year just for this person because they made you feel that way? No. Then once you're there, what, you're going to send them a message? Hey, bro, yeah. I did this all for you so <laughs> yeah, because like, you called me a nerd. Screw you. Called- you. Here I am yeah. better now or whatever. Like, like- <laughs> no, do it for yourself. Right? Mm-hmm. That's such a, you know, a lot of kind of the motivational tips that I'd listen to. I kind of makes me question, like to think deeper. It's like, is that really the best? course like i just like the hype like i like to yeah go for it do it yeah but certainly if you dig deeper you'll realize that a lot of the ailments a lot of the things that we suffer with are a lot of it's ego a lot of it's Mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. because oh my parents said i couldn't be this person but kind of a common theme that's come that that keeps rising up is what do you want like, what do you truly want? Mm-hmm. Right? What, yeah. What do you want? And like, don't just do, and then do it really. Right. Like, yeah. don't let any other influences kind of force you on a path that is not the one that you actually want. Now, do you have any advice for someone that wants the approval of others and cannot succumb cannot take the criticism and they are a person that really wants to do a but b is what society would want what would you say to a person that isn't comfortable with making their own decisions so one of my things is that i'm a i'm quite afraid of being judged And I would say that judgment from others and from yourself is necessary. It's how you interpret the judgment that is what leads to your success or your own failure. Because I always used to be really afraid of, say, I miss a day of class and then I go back to class the next day. Well, everybody in the class might say something like, oh, hey, where were you? That used to terrify me. Because I don't want to always say, oh, I was sick or I was this or I was that. Or the the famous, um, oh, hey, I thought you were dead. And you're like, nope, I'm still here. Ha ha. Right. That one used to get to me, which it's a, it's, it's a it's a well-meaning like, hey, I missed you kind of deal. Right. Why Why did it get to you? But it used to it used to bug me because I was afraid that they you know, didn't like me, that those people were making fun of me and that they didn't 
think of me in a good light. And what I've learned is that what other people says can only affect you as much as you let it. Right? So if you want to do A, society's telling you to do B. If you let society affect you enough that you then go do B, well, you've lost your whole plot. Right? And if you are, if you can be strong enough within yourself and learn how to deal with all of the things that come with society and then still go do A, then, then you've made it and you, that's good on you. Right. And it's, it's, it really has become a lot of like you or a lot of me, a lot of what I actually want and not what other people want for me or even if, and even if they think it's in my best interest, right? It's just because they think that doesn't mean I think that either. So it's interesting. That's awesome, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for coming on the long term podcast. Yeah. Thank you for having yeah. me. Yeah. I, I appreciate really it. appreciate the insights that you have and kind of given that middle finger to society, you know, not, not to the extreme, no, but, but ensuring that you know yourself and you prioritize yourself in my more. own way. It's, it's my own yeah. middle finger to society. We all got our journeys. Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah, I, uh, I appreciate you. Yeah. But Thanks, Edwin. As always, to everyone listening and watching, there is a place for you in this chaotic world. Never lose hope, strengthen your faith, and keep it long term. Peace. Jack Bazook, everyone. Oh, my ears hurt.